If you're new to photography, you've probably heard of something called the exposure triangle, the three settings that all work together to get the perfect shot. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO. For many beginners, these three settings can get pretty confusing, especially if you're on a shoot, you're running out of time, the model is waiting for you, maybe you're already stressed out as it is, or maybe you just haven't found a way to adjust these settings properly. So you just don't bother shooting in manual at all. But what if I told you that shooting in manual is actually way easier than you think? Okay, so in today's video, I wanted to share a method or rule I do when shooting that has helped me expose my shot perfectly every single time, adjust my settings way faster, and master shooting in manual mode. I think there's a common misconception when shooting in manual that every time you change one setting, you have to adjust all the other settings at the same time. And although that is true if you're trying to balance exposure, but if you're only trying to make your scene a little brighter or darker, changing one setting is all you need. I've seen some photographers taking portraits at a shutter speed of one over 40 because all they were concerned about was balancing their exposure and not realizing what they're compromising by doing that. So I wanna teach you how I shoot in manual and how I go about adjusting my settings on the fly. With everything that I shoot, I'll use portraits as an example because I am a portrait photographer. I try to determine what the one setting of the three, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, that is most important for what I'm shooting. For most portraits, well, actually all portraits, that is shutter speed. I wanna make sure that my subject or model is sharp at all times. I don't wanna look back at my photos and realize that the model's eyes in half the photos were blurry because I was shooting at a slow shutter speed. So of the three, shutter speed is the most important to me. Now, that is gonna be my starting point, but also the one setting that I make sure I never change. Most people say double your focal length, but I'll be honest, I set this to one over 250 and leave it there the entire shoot. From there, I determine the second most important setting, and for me, that's aperture. I wanna make sure I'm getting that blurry background behind my subject whenever I can. So I'll set that in place from the beginning of the shoot. Typically, this is f2.8. And lastly, the final setting of the exposure triangle, ISO. I like to call this the adjuster. This is that setting that I rely on to adjust my exposure and make the scene brighter or darker if there's a change in lighting, or maybe we're moving to a different part of the studio with different lighting. The only time this changes is if let's say I'm shooting outside on a crazy bright day, I'm trying to expose darker and my ISO is already at the lowest it can be, then I'll increase my shutter speed to balance my exposure. So basically my general rule is if I'm trying to expose brighter, adjust my ISO, and if I'm trying to expose darker and my ISO is already at its lowest, adjust my shutter speed. The key to this rule is that you're only adjusting one setting during your shoot. You don't have to change all three every single time the lighting changes in your scene. This makes shooting in manual extremely easy. I've been following this rule and shooting like this for so long now and has made it extremely easy to adjust my settings on the fly, but also make sure that my most important settings like shutter speed and aperture aren't being touched. Now you're probably thinking, Stefano, if you're increasing your ISO, aren't you going to get noise in your photo? And this is where understanding the capabilities of your camera come into play. In my head, I know that I can bump my ISO pretty high without getting an insane amount of noise. And with that in mind, I will crank my ISO up however much I need to expose properly as long as I keep it under my limit. But how do you figure out that limit or that mark before your camera starts to introduce an unacceptable amount of grain? Let me show you. First, you wanna figure out what you want to take a photo of for the test. Limit the amount of natural light in the scene. The easiest way to do this is to close your blinds in whatever room you're in. You'll wanna do this so all these shots are the same and no other light can come in to ruin this test. Then put your camera on a tripod, set your camera's aperture to something like f2.8, and we're not gonna change that the entire test. 
We already know there's going to be no noise at 100, so we'll just start at 400. Then balance the exposure in your scene with your shutter speed. Every single time you snap a photo, double your ISO and double your shutter speed. Now I'm going to import the photos into Photoshop to compare all of them. Now that I put all the photos side by side, if we look at each picture individually, we'll be able to tell where that limit is. After 12,800 ISO, I wasn't able to double my shutter speed anymore to continue raising my ISO. So I ended up throwing an ND filter on there to continue the test. So let's zoom in to ISO 400 here. As you can tell, there's no grain at all or no noise at all. 1600, we're still not seeing any noise come into even the black areas of our photo here. We'll go up to 3200. Again, you still really can't see any noise. Even if we zoom closely, you can see a little bit over here. Let's go down to 12,800. And this is where you start to see the noise a little bit more. You can see it on the cards here. We have noise on our camera. We also have a lot of noise right here where the lens is. So it's visibly noticeable, but nothing AI can't take care of. Now let's go to 25,600. And this, you can see that there's a lot of noise in this image. You can actually start to see it in the bright parts of our image. And that's how you can tell if a photo is very noisy. I personally wouldn't shoot at an ISO this high, but still it's pretty impressive that you can still make out a lot of the details. Now let's go down to 102,400. We actually start to lose a lot of the detail in our photo. You can see that the Nikon logo here or the writing is not really standing out as much as it did in let's say this photo. So on the Sony a7 IV that I took these photos at, the maximum ISO I would feel comfortable shooting at for something like portraits would be 12,800 ISO. That would be the max or the highest I would go. So I urge you to put your camera to the test and find out what that limit is for your camera and don't be scared of bumping up ISO if you need it. Now this rule pretty much works for anything. If you're a landscape photographer, you might have different priorities. Maybe you value aperture more because you wanna make sure to get everything sharp and in focus all the time. So you can set it to your desired aperture. Maybe that's F5.6 or F8 or higher, but let's say at the same time, you don't want any chance of grain in your photo either. So you set your ISO to 100. That leaves you with shutter speed being your adjuster. Now, because you're shooting landscapes, you can easily put your camera on a tripod and use your shutter speed to make your scene brighter or darker. This way you're not changing those important settings like aperture and ISO. Shooting in manual is literally that simple. If you follow this rule, I can guarantee that you'll have a way better experience when shooting. You won't have to fiddle with every setting anymore and you'll look like a pro how fast you adjust your settings. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more content, photography content like this, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.